Hey guys, what is going on? My name is NGS and thank you so much for clicking on the video. Now I know a lot of you guys are probably looking at that title and thinking to yourselves, Yo Neo, where's that Batman v Superman review bro? I've been waiting a month. And you see what happened was, it's actually a funny story, a true story though. Uh, a couple of us guys got together and did a full on discussion of the film and in the process of rendering such a large file, it ended up getting corrupted. So that is no longer usable, all two and a half hours worth of it. It was damn near movie commentary at that point. But fret not, I'm going to get the gang back together for one more ride and we are going to be doing this discussion, but we're going to be doing it live for your viewer enjoyment and entertainment and seeing us screw up live on camera in full color, yay. I do not know when that's going to be happening, but when it does, y'all will be the first to know. But what I want to do today is talk about something that I discussed briefly in that video, but not to the degree that I am today, mainly because back then it wasn't as big as it is now, and that is Batman vs. Superman's public perception. Now, it's no shocker to anybody that Batman vs. Superman has not gotten the greatest reviews on the world. It's currently sitting at a 28-29% approval rating, averaging 5 out of 10, last time I checked being a month ago, when I should have done that review. But that's besides the point. It's a new day. It's a new day. We're going to tackle that when we tackle that. Now, it'd be one thing if people didn't like the movie. Hell, it'd be an even crazier idea if they exercised their God-given right of free speech and wrote a review about it. But it's gotten deeper than that. We actually have individuals out there who are saying that there is an active campaign against this movie. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. <clears throat> Almost two minutes into the video, Neo is going to be talking about fanboys, right? What is the point of this dude talking about fanboys? He's been on the internet for almost 10 years now. Why, what purpose does it serve discussing fanboys? Now, it'd be one thing if it was just fanboys, but it's not fanboys. Because this type of mindset, the conspiracy tinfoil hat theory, that tends to die off within a couple of hours. Why? Because it doesn't gain traction. Not with this movie. This mindset has not only permeated the fanboy community but it's actually gotten into the minds of people involved in the film itself <clears throat> so around the time the reviews for civil war started to come out marvel actually lifted the embargo pretty early uh we started to see a lot of people make comparisons with the reviews they were looking at the batman versus superman reviews and looking at the civil war ones and because civil war had a higher overall approval, there was a conspiracy that the critics are biased for Marvel against DC. But it doesn't stop there. People are actually saying that the critics were paid off by Disney. Again, three minutes into the video, you're thinking to yourselves, Neo, these claims, they have nothing to stand on. They're just going to fall flat on their feet. Yes, you are right. But humor me for a little bit. This mindset has gone, you know, it, it's, it's existed for a while. You know, the disconnect between critics and fans. There's some movies that critics love that fans hate and vice versa. There's some movies that get slammed by critics, but fans absolutely adore them. It's a mindset that we're going to have the discussion for till the end of time. But with this movie, you cannot have that discussion because individuals are devaluing the opinions of others simply because... They didn't like the movie simply because you disagree with them. And this is a mindset that people in Hollywood have started to adapt. People, I'm going to name three examples. Warner Brothers executives, which are nameless, I guess, but two in particular, Jason Momoa and Ray Fisher. If you guys are fans of the DC Extended Universe, you might know these names. Jason Momoa, who portrays Aquaman, and Ray Fisher, who portrays Cyborg. Both of them, on numerous occasions, have posted images basically saying, F the critics, the fans are right. Screw the critics' opinions, the fans are the ones who win in the end. Now, I want to make something crystal clear. Ray Fisher, Jason Momoa. Where in the world do you guys get off devaluing another person's opinion based on the fact that they are not kissing your ass? Where do you get off making a distinction between a critic and a fan? Newsflash, Jason Momoa, you water Thor hippie wannabe. Fans are critics, and critics are fans. It doesn't matter 
if they hated your movie to hell and back, or they sang the praises of it. That is their opinion, and they have all the right to. You want to know why? Because we are in the public space. We are able to have these discussions. Discussions are the reason why movies are talked about. The reason why you are able to do what you do is because people talk about these movies. They generate buzz for these movies, whether they like it or not. And to sit here and to divide people into critics who hate the movie and fans who absolutely love the movie, you are doing the biggest disservice to people. Because you are saying that if a person dislikes this movie, they must be a dumb critic who's been paid off. What about the fans? All right. What about the fans who dislike this movie? The people whose profession is not to review films. Why can't they dislike the movie? Why can't they? Because I'm looking at the average reviews for Batman vs. Superman, and they're not that great. Around a 70-something percent approval rating with a 3 out of 5. That's not that great of a review score. Who's to say that the fans can't dislike the movie? And who's to say that the critics aren't fans? Are you telling me that some of these critics, who have been around longer than you have, who've been alive longer than you, who've been there since the Adam West days, to Michael Keaton, to Kevin Conroy, to Christian Bale, and now Ben Affleck as Batman, are you telling me they are not fans? What do you distinguish? A fan is a person who just loves the movie so you guys can quote it on Twitter? Yeah, y'all ain't slick Warner Brothers. I've seen the commercials. You're not posting critic reviews. You're posting Twitter reviews. Yeah, because... Yeah. Are you telling me that the critics can't be a fan of these characters? Are you telling me that the critics couldn't have grown up with these characters? Are you telling me that the critics... When you strip away the comic book aspect, are you telling me they can't just review this as a film itself and point out the glaring narrative problems, the strange characterizations, overstuffed, rushed points in the film that just drag on? Are you telling me they can't review this from a film perspective when you take away the stupid nostalgia goggles, the stupid DC versus Marvel thing? Are you telling me people can't go into that with a neutral outlook? But no, because they mentioned Marvel and compared it to a film that tackled similar themes, only better, they're obviously paid off and they obviously don't know what they're talking about to you. Get off your fucking high horse, you elitist Hollywood prick. Realize that the reason you were in the position you are is because the fans go out there and they see your movies. But if you want to get petty, oh, I'll get fucking petty. Those fans that you're saying, they're they're the ones who are right? Yeah, they sure didn't turn up for the box office. Batman vs. Superman has not even crossed a billion, and it's been out in the box office, the market, for a month. This is the movie that Warner Brothers were touting as beating the Avengers at minimum $1.5 billion. This movie has not even outgrossed any of the Nolan movies. So you're telling me, that Man of Steel, which did $667 million at the box office, was a failure and we couldn't get a legitimate Superman sequel for the measly difference of 200 to $300 million. There are going to be some very, very big decisions in Warner Brothers. If this universe does not kick off like they are expecting it to, mm-mm. but that is another video for another day. Going back to the whole devaluing critics like I said what is a critic and what is a fan because to you a fan is a sheep who will show for the movie who will say nothing negative about the movie so Jeremy Johns Chris Stuckman Angry Joe those guys who had major problems with the movies they had their gripes but they gave it a somewhat decent score you tell me they're not fans hmm hmm Go up to the average individual and tell them that unless you like this movie, unless you're kissing my ass, you are not a fan. It's it's just, it, it's mind-boggling. It seriously is. This is discussion. This is healthy discussion. These are what these movies are made for. And by you putting these heavy-ass restrictions on people, instead of letting them do what they want to do, it's child. It's not even childish, because to imply it was childish, that would mean that a, a child would make a mistake and they would learn from it. No, this is a temper tantrum. 
Next thing you're going to tell me your mom's name is Martha and this is why you're doing it. I don't know. Would make sense, to be honest. But I want to talk about the people nowadays who are saying that there is this this big collusion with Rotten Tomatoes, man. Rotten Tomatoes cannot be trusted. Look at their reviews for this. Okay, first off, Rotten Tomatoes is not a review site. It has never been a review site. It is a review aggregator. It aggregates all the top scores from critics together. Is it a perfect system? No. Is it damn good? Yes. And the important thing at the end of the day is to not look at the number on there. It's to read these actual reviews, read why these people say the things that they do. But that's too hard. Apparently that is too hard for people to actually read the reviews and see what these people are talking about. That they actually back up their points and they back up their fa- everything they're saying with facts. No, we can't do that. We can't do that. It's obviously collusion. It's obviously collusion. But again, going back to what people were saying. Critics hate superhero movies. That's why all of the Marvel movies have gotten good reviews. Oh, but we can't talk about Marvel because they're biased, right? That's why the Brian Singer X-Men movies have gotten good reviews. Oh, still Marvel related, right? Uh, that's why, you know, the non-Marvel and DC superhero movies have gotten decent reviews as well. Hmm. Gee, maybe it's just the fact that they didn't like this movie for cinematic reasons. For narrative reasons, for things that go into a film. Maybe. But again, at the end of the day, critics just, they hate DC stuff. Which is why the Nolan's Batman trilogy is still one of the most critically acclaimed trilogies of all time. Which is why The Dark Knight is still hailed as one of the best movies of all time. Oh, y'all disagree with it? Well, guess what? You're able to disagree with it. And that's what you don't understand. You don't understand that the reason why these are able, we're able to do these things is because we have this freedom of speech, this soapbox to voice our opinion on things, to convince people why this movie is good, to convince people why this movie is bad. It doesn't matter what people think, right? It all matters what you think at the end of the day, which is something that these people need to take their own advice on. But no. They'll just look away from the great reviews that the Batman animated films have gotten. They'll look away from all those and just say that critics are biased for Marvel. Because they've never given a Marvel movie a rotten rating. Even though they've pointed out glaring problems and things like Age of Ultron and Iron Man 2 and the list goes on and on. It's just maybe that those were better made films. Who knows? Who knows? I don't. (sighs) Bottom line at the end of the day. If you are going to make such a bold statement like that, Grace Randolph, you better be able to back it up with facts. But of course you won't. Of course you're going to just say these claims. But listen here, Missy. You're not just some new name blogger when you make those claims. To say that Disney is paying off these critics, to say that Disney is actively participating in collusion with folks, You're liable for defamation of character. And I'm not saying the Iron Rat's going to do that, but if they wanted to, they'd have all the right. I I just, I can't believe it. I, I seriously can't. It's people's opinions. And gee, maybe they backed it up with facts too. No, but that's unheard of. That's unheard of. (sighs) Ugh.